Welcome back to the second episode of Whiskey World, but the first episode of the new season of Whiskey World. We are here with our Whiskey Cokes. We're going to be trying to bring you some different kind of whiskey drinks throughout the weeks. We'll see how it goes, though. So this episode starts off with a bang. We have no idea what's happening. Um, the first big thing that happens is Bernard wakes up on the beach, and at first, he's still in his party clothes, so you're like, oh, it's right after the party. Yeah, I assumed it was, like, next morning. I'm like, oh, they're picking up, like, right where we left off. No, they're fucking not. Huh. Well, they kind of are, but we'll get to that. No, that would be way too simple. Of course. And this is Weast World, so we do not do simple here. So, it, you actually find out shortly after that it's actually been, like, almost 12 days. Yeah, it's like, it's like 11, 11 days and a half Since the party, and... He gets woken up by, like, all these military forces rolling into the beach. Well, and we don't know at this point if he remembers that he's essentially Arnold or if he's not. We're not sure. He's not really talking a whole lot. And then we start to get, like, these flashbacks. Although, before we get to that, can we talk about, in our season one wrap-up, if you haven't watched that, go check it out. My theory (laughs) was that we were on a space station or somewhere in space. I was wrong. (laughs) We're not in space. Well, we could still be in space. I don't think we are. But they did say it's an island, and all the troops were rolling in off the coast, so that would lead us to believe they had to come there by ship. So, in what is now classic Westworld form, very Lost-like... But better. But better, yeah. We're getting a lot of flashbacks this season, so because we start 12 days ahead, they've already made it clear, I think, that for this season we're going to be jumping backwards... And we're flashing back to right at the party. So you get what happens 12 days later, and then we go back and find out a little bit what happened after the party. And shit went down. Yeah, they roll out these flashbacks throughout the entire episode, so we'll talk about them as we get to plot points. But yeah, we slowly piece together some of the things that happened in the party. I know we see like where Tessa Thompson's character, who I cannot for life me remember her name, is it Charlotte? I think it's Charlotte. 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 Uh, her and Bernard are like in a uh, barn with like a bunch of other board members or guests, and they're just trying to survive the crazy hosts. But let's be real. Who do we care about in the show? Dolores. It's Dolores. And she co- pops in a couple different times. She's running around killing people is what she's doing this Her episode. Her and Teddy are literally going around and executing humans. Not hosts, but humans. And hosts, though. That's true. Because we got a video of her walking up to hosts saying, uh, the outer world's not for everyone, and shoots them in the face. But we get some cool stuff with her character where she, you know, she makes it clear that she's no longer running just the Wyatt profile or the Dolores profile, and she says herself, she goes, I'm something new. There were a lot of really cool quotes in this episode, and one of them, I wrote them down as we were watching, because I have my notes. (laughs) And, um... One of them was that you created us to be prisoners of your own desires. Now you are prisoners of mine. Yes. So good. So in present time, we also find out that though majority of the party guests were murdered, William, of course, survives. We can't have him die this soon. So he essentially covered himself with dead bodies, whether intentionally or accidentally, probably intentionally knowing him. And he survives. So he's up and kicking and running around doing his thing. So, of course, we can't leave out Maeve, because Maeve is, like, my second favorite character, tied with Dolores, basically. So, she's at headquarters, because, of course, she chose at the end of season one not to leave when mm-hmm. she had the chance. She's decided to come back to try to save her daughter. And she is there, and she is trying to take control of shit. Headquarters has also gone to shit. Everybody's been there. Everyone's dead. Although, she does run into Lee, who is our narrator writer. He's the author of all the narrations and the storylines. And he's trying to, like finagle working with her so he can live and it's not working so well he like tries to sell her out at one point and she's just like no bitch i mean we knew that for such a big personality they weren't just gonna kill him off that's true so i knew he was gonna be around and i think he'll be interesting as we go and how he develops because i really don't care about him that much but i think he is a good case of levity He was kind of one-dimensional in season one, or maybe one-dimensional isn't the right, like, phrase. He was just very, like, predictable. Maybe that's better. And so I'm hoping that we get some surprises with his character in this season. And we do see that Hector survived, which I like, and he had, like, 50 bullet holes in him, which was cool. Yeah, because I guess I forgot about this. She turned down. Yeah, I'm like, how did he survive that? Because we see other hosts succumbing to lesser wounds, and it's because Maeve 
t- tweak the settings a little bit. But I'm glad he's back. I like his character, and I feel like he has some growth to do. It'll be very interesting to see how all the hosts grow into their personalities as, like, they have, can create their own. <laughs> so moving back to Charlotte and Bernard, uh, they end up trying to get away with some other guests. That doesn't work out. They fall into a trap. So they survive that, and then Tessa, he's like, oh, there's no access point. She's like, yes, there is. So they find this secret access point, or she leads him to it, basically. And it turns out that that's where their little headquarters was for getting data out of the park. And so she brings him down there, and Bernard's struggling just a bit. He's, his, like, dying. His brain is melting. After yeah. he recovered his memories last time, it's, like, frying his circuits. Yeah. So he has to deal with that. He fixes himself. Yo, but I think the biggest thing about this is there's some creepy-ass droids down there. And I think that they're, they introduced, they focused on them so much, I think those drones are going to, like, come back. And with the slew of other what-the-fuck moments in this episode... So many. Yeah, one of the biggest ones was the ending where they go, Oh, look, there's all these hosts congregated over here. And it's just a sea of dead hosts. And we think... I think we saw Teddy. Like, it's kind of muddled, but I'm pretty sure it's Teddy. And this is present time, so Mm -hmm. we don't know what's happened in the last 11 to 12 days. Why are all the hosts dead? Why are there a thousand dead hosts just floating in the lake? Well, not only that, but they said that sea didn't used to be there. Like, that little lake area, whatever, it must have been created. How did they flood the whole, like, a giant chunk of the park, and why are there all these dead hosts? Yeah. So we're going to find out, I guess, as the season goes on. My theory is that they're not the hosts from Westworld, although they were dressed in, like, Western garb, so I'm probably wrong on that. But I'm wondering if they use same host designs in different parks, because we find out that there are not only two parks. There are six. Six. So my theory was that they had, uh, like, washed on shore from another park, but since that was a created sea, maybe it didn't come from, like, another island. I don't know. It's a very... Flawed theory, but my yeah. brain's just turning. We're going to have to, like, figure out... We're going to have to wait and see, because, like, what if Dolores just killed them all, because that's her awesome. brain now? Because if Teddy's there, at some point she'd have to do that, and I could totally see current Dolores doing that nowadays. So speaking of Dolores and her mission, which I wanted to mention, because this was another quote that I wrote down in my handy-dandy <laughs> notebook. Teddy, like, confronts her and is like, what are we doing? Like, this isn't really what I had in mind. And she's like, it won't be enough to rule this world. We'll have to take that one from them as well. Just, like... Yes. Get it, Dolores. She's full on. We're good. But so I'm interested to see what exactly her criteria is for other hosts to join her. And what if uh, ultimately Teddy doesn't meet those criteria for her. And I'm going back to the park six thing. At least six parks. I hope we we see those. We have no clue what the other ones are. But leave us your theories what the other parks are. Because I'm curious. Yeah, give us your six parks that you want to see. We know two well, of them. four others. Yeah, give us your four other dream parks. Yeah, that, that you want to see in the show. We'll feature the best options on Twitter. So that's the whole recap of the first episode. This season is definitely kicking off with a bang. And I said this while we were watching the show. I had expected season two to be a lot more straightforward and following these storylines as they grow. And no, they managed to make it all timey-wimey and very confusing. So I'm excited to see how they, like, rectify that. It's interesting how they get you involved, and you have no idea what... You you have the right amount of, like, I know what's going on. I also have no idea what... I do appreciate that they've kind of kept the same, like, four core storylines going, though. True. So you have Dolores, you have Maeve, you have Bernard, and you have William. And those were kind of the four we followed the first season, and you flip between them. And I like that they're continuing that, and we get to see how their paths get to intertwine. Well, overall, we had a blast with this new season. I'm so glad this show is back. I think we both are. And we're super excited for this series and to find out what happens, see if our theories are correct. And I've expect... already had one debunked. Yep. I, had... <laughs> I expect great things from this season, though, and it looks like it's shaping up well. Let us know your crazy theories and thoughts on this episode and where you think the season is going to go. I want to talk about all of them with you. Uh, You can either leave it in the comments or come talk to us on any of our social media. We'll have it listed down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. You know the drill. Subscribe if you like us. If you want to keep watching this Whiskey World series, we're going to have them up every week. So subscribe, hit the bell notification so you know when they come on. And uh, we have lots of other videos. We don't only do TV show reviews. We have movie reviews. No. (laughs) We're very diverse on this channel with the type of content we do. So if you want to check out any of our other type of content, you can check it out over there. And we'll see you guys in our next video. Bye.